Hello everyone, today in this video we will fight against the Atmos character of our world around us and we will stay for a while with geopolitics and military strategy and we will comment on the importance that with time is growing of a current conflict in Syria that started in March 2011 and now we can see, which uh, can be really shocking, that uh, even western powers uh, cannot defeat single well well organized self sustainable country that was in is Syria uh, in a pr in in its present form because we see that okay since mm, September 2015 Syria received Russian military aid in a direct form officially and this uh, uh, this aid stabilized the current Syrian government some people call it regime okay as we want so uh, that's why this uh, government slash regime resists very efficiently till now and a few weeks ago officially they were uh, uh, accepted again uh, to the Arab League so we can say that they came back as a sinful son uh, in quotation to the Arabian family, family of our Arabic countries and now we see that even countries that were initially in the beginning of this conflict heavily financing all actions against the current Syrian government slash regime uh, are trying to re-establish very good relation with this regime again because they understood that it's not so easy to remove it uh, because many people died, many weapons were destroyed, many uh, a lot much incredible amount of money was spent on this conflict and this regime controls the majority of the country after some time and in worst case uh, as far as I remember uh, as much as we can trust this data regime was always controlling about two-thirds of the country in the uh, wars uh, scenario it was in the beginning of the conflict first few years the regime was controlling 60 percent of the best area of the country including its best and the most fertile territories so we see that this is also a good lesson for us uh, that world changed and it's no longer possible to defeat the regime like it was with the regime of Saddam Hussein with the costs of several destroyed equipment, high class equipment and 500 killed soldiers now we see that in Syria unofficially of course western armies with uh, with Russian troops and also uh, there are also Chinese engineers and instructors Iranians were fighting with each other as I said uh, many people were uh, were killed in action, equipment destroyed, and money spent, and the uh, world need to, needs to accept, including the Western one, that the Syrian government slash regime will not be changed, at least not so quickly, and uh, the war needs to finish sooner than, la than later, and this is also another sign for Western world that Arabic countries decided to organize their own region without uh, very much supervision from the uh, from neither uh, Western nor Eastern superpowers of course there is some always influence but it's not such uh, I would say uh, patronizing approach as it was uh, till recently from the Western or uh, li like with this Iranian Accord, Eastern superpowers. Now they want to uh, Arabic countries arrange the Syrian affairs on their own. So we see that the geopolitic, geopolitical balance of powers is really changing, and we need to accept that uh, world is becoming polycentric, if we want it or not. Uh, yeah, wise countries, wise government, wise nations will use it to their own benefit stupid ones will of course lose uh, when the situation is changing it was always like this in history and it it's not any different nowadays but the importance of the Syrian conflict historians will see it more and more with time 
is incredible because this is first conflict on such a large scale when the superpowers in case in this case western superpowers cannot defeat the regime of the uh, middle sized country uh, which is located in a very strategic location it's all as i mentioned before it's also a consolation for such countries like poland or other countries which would like to uh, free free the, uh, themselves from the influence of other superpowers and international financier of course it's really costly it it demands many victims and many sacrifices but wise people know that freedom doesn't come for free and one cannot deny it we should also remember that Syria from the ancient times I mean very ancient times even the ones really uh, very much preceding classical antiquity was always a, a field of uh, rival uh, rivalry between superpowers like Egypt and Mitanni state uh, later Egypt and Hittite state and also later Assyria, B Babylonia, and other super and also Egypt uh, and other superpowers. So uh, w one can uh, say in a little bit malicious way uh, because it also uh, it, it also uh, results in a incredible suffering of Syrian population that nothing changed for thousands of years and here as a amateur historian I, n I need to agree that uh, unfortunately uh, life and world, uh, world superpowers in incline incredible losses to the Syrian state and population because of its strategical imp importance in terms of its location and, and also partially resources yeah, we see that Russian naval base in Latakia and many, many other, other uh, things like this. But one should see that Syria, of course, with some support of allies like Russia, China, uh, Iran, uh, could and can oppose huge superpowers plus finan financier, financier powers and many, many uh, influences of different um, more or less secret societies that influence our economical and political life we cannot deny it but this is a good example that gives consolation to many other nations that would like to uh, free themselves uh, from these negative influences from either eastern superpowers or western superpowers and we see that when you are self-sustainable in terms of agriculture and basic production of course not on the very high level but uh, uh, you can survive and oppose even the greatest superpowers and of course network of connections and alliances it's also very important in this whole story but we see that uh, uh, times when uh, it was easy to defeat a country uh, with small losses are over first uh, signs that times are changing was the case of Libya of Gaddafi because it, it was not enough to induce the rebellion against the regime of uh, very specific person uh, that Colonel Gaddafi was uh, because Gaddafi was almost killing the rebellion after a few months. Only a very a complex and massive intervention of uh, Western air forces and incredible support for the uh, rebels uh, resulted in the defeat of Gaddafi's regime. What happened with Gaddafi actually no one knows because with these official statements I, I just told you once how it goes but uh, now Li Libya still has problem with many problems with coming back to its stability and we see that it was first sign that it's not so easy to defeat a country 
So Arabian world also changed, evolved and become more and more resistant, uh, resistant on the pressure fr either from east or from the west. And we see that it also has implications huge for one state that was uh, supported initially by England and France, even established by them, and since 1967-68, mainly by United States and uh, UK geopolitically, I mean Israel. So, uh, our Arabian states see that Israel uh, actually it's n not so much needed for them as it looked like uh, still uh, recently now they realize that they can arrange many of their own issues on their own so we will see what will come out of it but one can be sure that syrian conflict resulted in incredible changes in geopolitical arrangement in the middle east and not only and seemingly it resulted in changes in also geopolitical thinking uh, among elites of many countries of the region and not only because we see also in the current conflict in the eastern Ukraine that mm, actually when we have clashes between uh, Western and Eastern forces, uh, Western uh, superpowers and Eastern superpowers, very quickly we reach the situation of stalemate and uh, frontline cannot move, cannot be easily broken and the opponent cannot be easily defeated. So we can say Libya not yet, but st there were first signs that even so-called third world countries in quotation uh, are gaining more and more uh, abilities and capacities to defend themselves against uh, even superpowers. But Syria is a clear example and now conflict in Ukraine that we reached similar level of armament and art of war and tactics, I mean Eastern and Western superpowers, that when they uh, compete uh, with each other on the battlefield, a stalemate is very quickly reached and uh, not so much can change it. As of now, situation looks like this, and I think especially military historian with, uh, historians within some time will, uh, will really appreciate and acknowledge, unfortunately tragic and long-lasting, case of Syrian civil war uh, in which it was proven that uh, we Western uh, powers are slowly losing their absolute uh, dominance in the battlefield. They still dominate, but they started losing their absolute dominance in the battlefield uh, technology and not only. This is how I see it. And that's why we need to emphasize and observe the Syrian case because it will tell us a lot about our future. All the best. Have a nice day. Bye.